45 years, zero name changes, new offices, more staff, improved technology to better serve you. Education, services, investments, think real estate, think Marshall Reddit, brokerage, property management, private lending, creating financial independence through real estate since 1979. Hello, everyone, and thank you for logging on to our presentation this evening. Tonight, we have a very hot topic that we are excited to present to you, and that is how to use your IRA and 401k to invest in real estate. I'm accompanied this evening by Brett Sininski with Sense Financial, and my name is Tassos Fathos. little bit about myself here. I have been a licensed realtor for about six years now in the state of California. I graduated from Cal State University Long Beach with my bachelor's in business administration. I have two years of direct property management experience where I spent time coordinating maintenance, leasing property, and working really on all aspects of property management in general. And our portfolio typically ranged from about one to uh, 30 unit buildings. Some fun facts are I'm a student pilot. I am a Husky owner and I love to play basketball. I try to make it out at least two to three times a week to get some healthy competition in and a little bit of exercise. I've completed real estate transactions in California, Texas, and Tennessee. And I am an investor here at our Marshall Reddick Mortgage Fund. Here are the topics we're going to be covering tonight. So we're going to be talking about 401k or self-directed IRA. We're going to compare the benefits and differences between solo 401ks and self-directed IRAs to really determine which account or which type of account best uh, aligns with your guys' investment strategies. We're going to talk about tax-free or tax-deferred growth. So we're going to discover how using 401ks or self-directed IRAs help real estate investors and private lenders grow their portfolios with tax deferred or even tax free gains. We're going to talk about leveraging your retirement funds for real estate. So we're going to learn how to use your retirement funds to purchase, finance, uh, manage real estate properties without penalties or even early withdrawal uh, taxes. We're going to talk about annual contributions to these accounts, and we're going to go into detail on checkbook control. So what we expect from you guys as attendees this evening is we hope that you guys take something from the topics we're going over this evening. Please feel free to take notes. If at any time during the webinar uh, you have questions, please type it in the chat and we'll make sure to have it answered for you. Um, if, any come, if, if any questions come up that you'd like a little bit more in-depth conversation on, please feel free to write them down and we will make sure to follow up with them in a consultation call. Um, and always remember that a, a copy of this presentation will be emailed to you guys within 24 hours of its completion. So some of you may be familiar with Marshall Reddick Real Estate, but for others, it may be your first time here. So we're a full service real estate firm that has four divisions within the company. The first division is our real estate brokerage. We help people buy and sell their primary homes as well as buy and sell investment property nationwide. We did about 900 transactions last year and around 90% of those transactions we currently manage, which brings us to our second division, the property management. Um, we take care of everything for the landlord, from leasing to maintenance, renovations, rent collections, and pretty much all aspects so that all the landlord needs to do is collect their monthly rent check. Our third division is our private lending. So sometimes when you can't qualify for conventional financing, you'll need private financing. Uh, Marshall Reddick provides non-owner occupied real estate loans to borrowers doing either fix and flips, new construction or purchasing investment property. And then our fourth division is our mortgage fund. Oops, I'll scroll back here. Our fourth division is our mortgage fund. So the same way you can own real estate and collect rent checks, our investors own mortgages and they collect mortgage payments. I personally invest in the Marshall Reddick Mortgage Fund um, and collect a quarterly distribution. 
on to our Marshall Reddick footprint. So we're not only in California, we're broadcasting live here out of uh, Newport Beach in our Orange County office. In California, we also have our Los Angeles office and our office inland in Riverside. Move on over to Texas, we have our San Antonio office, New Braunfels office and our Austin office. All these offices are right along the 35 freeway, which connects the major metropolitans and our newly founded Houston office. Tennessee, we have our Nashville and our Clarksville office. And in Florida, we have our Cape Coral office. And this here is the team that makes the, man in, uh, the magic happen with us at Marshall Reddick. Um, we have everything from accounting, property management, private lending, everybody's in these photos here. On the top left, we have our new Braunfels office. We have that big blue sign. Move over to the right, we have our San Antonio team. Bottom left, we have our Cape Coral team. Over here in the middle, we have our Newport Beach office. And then bottom right, we have our Clarksville office. So the markets that we're in and on that initial footprint uh, slide that you saw, it, you know, we're not there on accident. We actually do a lot of research on these markets because it ultimately helps us navigate for our investors on where to invest. So this is what you typically want to look for in one of those markets. So you wanna look for a good job market. You wanna make sure that the job market is in a constant incline. You wanna make sure that there are multiple um, sources of job markets. So we're looking for military, we're looking for corporations, we're looking for a lot of small businesses. And this makes sure um, that there are jobs available and you're pulling in a good tenant. We're making sure that the vacancy is low. So that means that if there is vacancy um, that is low, there will be a demand for housing. We're looking for economic diversity. So again, it kind of ties in with um, diversity as far as employment is concerned. So we're looking for different manufacturing companies, government jobs, educations, all that good stuff is tied into a good real estate market. We're also looking for home affordability in our markets. We want to make sure that they're priced low so that investors have access to properties without massive amounts of capital and there's a lot of runway for properties to appreciate. We wanna make sure that it's a landlord friendly state and that the laws in the state are in favor of the landlord. We want to make sure that in this market there's strong education, um, strong education because it turns into white collar jobs that will give us a great base for our tenant pool. You know, they're getting higher salaries and we're able to constantly increase the rent. And we want reliable property management. Now, when I say that, I mean that we want a variety of property management companies in that section so that you as an investor can have choices when looking into which property management you're selecting. And ultimately we can sell you on our services. So after all this presentation, if you choose to have a consult, this is kind of what you can expect from a, a consult with uh, one of the advisors here at Marshall Reddick or with Brett. So we're going into the why, how, when, what, where, right? So we'll be setting your goals. We'll kind of talk about your strategies as an investor and where you want to be with your real estate career. We're going to evaluate options, go through our markets and see the different types of either appreciation or cash flow opportunities. We're gonna go through time frame and decide what your timing on everything is. Um, we're gonna set your criteria. Maybe some have different purchase price than others. Some are looking for appreciation, others are looking for cash flow. We're gonna identify markets and really introduce you to all the key players. Okay. And with all that being said, I'm gonna pass the mic along to Brett. All right, Tasso, can you hear me? Absolutely, yeah, I can hear you clear, Brett. Awesome. Thank you for the opportunity to team up with you guys on this webinar. We really appreciate it. Uh, one of many we've done with uh, with Marshall Reddick over the years. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to talk about the self-directed IRA and the solo 401k, which is our specialty. Um, I'm going to give this uh, PowerPoint change a whirl. There we go. All right. So um, there I am. We're with Sense, I'm with Sense Financial Services, LLC. We've been in business since 2010. Uh, we've served well over uh, 3,500 clients 
help them set up well over 4,000 different checking accounts, um, excuse me, uh, self-directed retirement accounts. Um, and just before we get into this, just a little bit of a disclaimer. We're not a fiduciary. We don't provide legal tax, investment accounting, or any other professional advice. If you do need such advice, please reach out to a competent professional. Uh, Marshall Reddick, as well as us, we have lots of uh, different relationships with different professionals in the industry, CPAs or otherwise. So if you need a connection, we're happy to provide that. Um, our mission here at Sense Financial is to help clients obtain control of and protect their retirement accounts. Proverbs 21.5 says, good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. Uh, you work hard for your money. We want to come alongside you and work hard for you as well and ultimately help you uh, retire uh, with dignity. And let me back up a little bit, uh, just more about me. I apologize. I know you're not here for me, but just I want to add some credibility to my conversation here. Uh, I have been a buy and hold real estate investor since about 2006, actually 2005. Uh, and I purchased real estate through Marshall Reddick during that time, uh, starting back then. I've had my real estate license here in California for about 10 years uh, prior to working with Sense Financial, my primary job was helping buyers and sellers sell the place they call home. Uh, mostly worked with retail buyers, uh, some investors as well. Um, so I have a, a good mix on both sides of the equation, being the purchaser and the investor, and then also representing those parties. In addition to that, haven't done any property management, so tasso has <laughs> got me on that, but uh, definitely helped people get into some leases along the way. Um, anyway, enough about me. Thank you for that. Why should you listen to us? Well, I already said we've been around since 2010. Most of our business comes from existing clients, comes from referrals. Uh, existing clients is the number one source of those referrals. Uh, secondary would be um, Marshall Reddick, companies like that we have relationships with. CPAs provide really good referrals, as you can imagine. Um, but the number one source uh, by quantity for sure is our existing clients. We have five-star reviews all over the place. Uh, you can check us out, just Google Sense Financial LLC reviews, and you'll see those on Google, Yelp, Trustpilot, um, kind of all over the place. So we're happy to have you check those out and do whatever vetting you need to do to make sure you're comfortable with us before you uh, choose to do business with us. Um, so we're gonna talk about two sides of the coin here. You have uh, conventional investing, think about uh, what, Schwab, Vanguard, Fidelity, Edward Jones, those companies provide. That's your uh, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETF side. That's the bus in this example here on the left side there. That's the bus that has to stay on the track, has to get to, you know, to get on the bus, you have to get there at a certain time. You have to get off at a certain time. You have to walk or get a ride to that stop. And you're really confined to a certain route. Uh, you're you're mm -hmm. just, you don't have the choice, right? Now, like those those depictions are very accurate, Brett. Uh, the 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 tram there on the on the on the trails, and then the the uh, the the Mercedes there, the Benz kind of free go, right? Exactly. I don't even have any idea what kind of Benz that is, by the way, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> right? You know, but it is an off-road vehicle, and that's the self-directed side. We want to free. We want to we want to take the handcuffs, jailbreak right. your retirement money, and allow you to self-direct. You can drive over the you know, over the road, the off-road, you can drive over uh, rocks, you know, you can drive yeah. through a little bit of water, you know, that's the self-directed side. So we're going to focus more on that side than we are on the uh, conventional side, of course. Uh, but most of you, if you have an existing retirement account, it's probably invested in the S&P 500 or somewhere else in Wall Street. Uh, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. It's good to have diversification. I'm mm -hmm. going to maybe show you a little bit of a better way to get more consistent returns. And uh, Marshall Reddick is a great partner in that uh, as well. So the self-directed side of retirement investing allows for virtually unlimited options. You can do crypto, you can do private lending, tax deeds, uh, residential real estate, buy and hold properties. You can do commercial investing. You can invest in private businesses, uh, precious metals. We actually have a client who set up a self-directed IRA and he's investing a lot of that into SpaceX, which is not a publicly traded company, but at some point in the near future, uh, he expects SpaceX to go IPO. So when they do go IPO, 
uh, he expects a return that's going to be pretty healthy on his private equity shares that he currently has at SpaceX. If he wants to cash in, he can. He can self-direct into something else. Uh, but if he wants to keep that, he can just simply roll that into Vanguard, IRA, whatever, and keep investing in now what is on Wall Street. Uh, either way would work. Now, he couldn't do that with a traditional IRA or 401k because it's it's locked into Wall Street options only. You cannot do that mm -hmm. private business investing. So just wanted to share that quick story and I'll, I'll, I'll share some other stories here along the way. Uh, just a quick story here, Brad and Jennifer, yes, their names have been changed uh, out of Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, Brad started a real estate business, uh, much like myself, just helping buyers and sellers buy real estate. His wife joined him in that. Uh, his goal when he met us was diversification. He wanted to uh, get out of, not, not necessarily get out of, but he wanted, in addition to what his IRAs and former employer 401ks were invested in, he actually wanted to invest in real estate as well. And not only did he in, unlock, he, with, uh, with our help, unlock those funds to be able to self-direct into alternative assets like real estate and private lending, but he did it in a solo 401k. I'm going to talk to you about why that's uh, a superior product to the IRA, but either way works. And he did it in his Roth. So Roth mm -hmm. means that there's no taxes on the way out, right? Uh, I'll talk more about the Roth, but essentially the decision is, are, am I going to pay taxes on the seed or am I going to pay taxes on the harvest? That's a decision you have to make with your CPA's help. Well, he decided to pay taxes on the seed and then invest in real estate in his Roth. And the result is that he has millions of dollars in his Roth 401k in real estate, none of which is going to be tax free. He could literally distribute one of those properties to himself. He's over 59 and a half right now. So that's not a taxable event or penalties. And it's in a Roth, so there's no taxes anyway. So he could distribute one of these properties, say he wants to go live in it, and, and it's a not a taxable event. He could sell it and take all that money into his personal account, no taxes. Really brilliant. He's doing rentals, single family, and also uh, commercial as well. Mm. So the two options, okay? So the diagram here is a self-directed IRA, a lot of people, solo 401k, two people. Uh, there's a reason for that. The self-directed IRA, anybody can do, right? You're over 18, you could do a self-directed IRA. Uh, most people are rolling existing retirement funds into the self-directed IRA because the annual contribution limit is only $7,000 a year, 8,000 if you're over 50. So it's hard to self-direct into alternative assets if you're starting out from scratch. So most people have a former employer 401k that they're rolling in, uh, an existing IRA, you know, 403B, any qualified retirement account can go into a self-directed IRA uh, with, with the exception of probably if you're still working for that employer, that 401k is usually not able to be rolled out until it's a former employer. On the other side, you have the solo 401k and this has a self-employment requirement attached to it. Uh, it's really not hard to become self-employed. So if you're not, please continue listening because it's not difficult. Uh, here's legitimate self-employment activity in the eyes of the IRS. Okay, It can't be a hobby. A hobby might be, and you can Google hobby IRS, they have a good article on this, but it might be uh, you take photos, you, you buy some photo uh, photography equipment, you take photos for fun. Uh, you, maybe you do a wedding here and there, but you're, you're not making any money on it. Maybe it's like just to break even. That's not a business, it's a hobby. A business is uh, you could drive for Uber one day a month, get your real estate license, manage the properties that you already own. Um, a lot of our clients do that. Uh, if, if they're already managing them and they buy these properties, let's say they buy these rentals through Marshall Reddick and they, they're local so they can manage them on their own, that's fine. Uh, if they're doing that, they can form a property management company. Even if they're living off of this rental income, with, which a lot of clients do, and now that property management company qualifies them for legitimate self-employment activity. So it's primarily for the business owner and their spouse, hence mm -hmm. the, the name Solo 401k, all right? And I'll talk more about the benefits of both as we move on. First off, let's talk about the checkbook IRA. It's called a checkbook IRA for a reason. Tasso hit, it on, hit this at the beginning. We're gonna talk more about checkbook control 
hence the name checkbook IRA. Here's how it works. So you come to us, you say, hey, I've got $100,000 in this IRA. It could be Roth, could be traditional, could be a combination of both, either way. What we do, once we process the order, you become a client, we open a new account with an IRS approved custodian. Now you still must have a custodian with an IRA per IRS guidelines, uh, but what we do, once we open that account, we actually set up the qualified transfer. And again, this can come from any qualified retirement account, usually with the exception of the existing employer 401k plan. Once that happens, we create what's called a special purpose LLC. Now this LLC is single member. That member is the IRA. You're the manager of this LLC, which gives you checkbook control. Now, they're still a custodian, but we bypass the custodian with the LLC. So all assets, all accounts, whether it's a checking account or a brokerage account or real estate or whatever, are in the LLC. You have the manager level access to it. So you have signing authority, investment decision making, you're the fiduciary of your account. Then once that's all set up, the bank account is funded, which is again in the LLC. The IRA has 100% of the units of that LLC, and now you can begin to make investments. All the income must go into and out of, uh, think about, uh, uh, you actually, I didn't explain this, but you have a regular checking account. Okay, think about like a regular checking account at home for your personal reasons or business or whatever. You have a checkbook, you have a debit card, you can do online bill pay, you can do wire transfers, you can request cashier's check, cashier's check. So that's the home, the checking account is the home for the money until you deploy it into an investment. So all the income from the investments, all the interest, those quarterly payments that Tasso was talking about getting for investing in the Marshall Reddick Real Estate Fund, which a lot of our clients do, are going into this checking account, right? By the way, a little plug on that fund, you can jump in and out anytime. There's no contracts on that. It's really, really a great thing. And I'm gonna get on a soapbox about investing in real estate or private lending or, uh, yeah, those two things. Mm -hmm. You are contractually agreed upon in those investment vehicles to get a certain return. So if it's a rental property, you have a, an agreement with the tenant that they're going to pay you X amount per month. You know what to expect. Uh, you can't really guess on the, well, you can guess. You don't really know what the appreciation is going to look like on the property. The crystal ball is fuzzy. You have an mm -hmm. idea but it's all going back into the tax, into the uh, retirement account, regardless if you sell or if not, it's just in the property as equity. Okay. If you do private lending, you're going to get, I don't know, Tasso, correct me, maybe eight to 12% ish. Is, we're, we're looking, yeah, we're looking at about eight to uh, 10, depending on uh, the quarter, but we've been having very strong returns, very strong returns. And they are very, very transparent. If you go to their website and look at these, uh, the the private lending option, and I encourage you to do that. They're very transparent with the history uh, of of the returns and all the investments and loans that are uh, have been made, and etc. So really check that out. But my point is, you're contractually agreed upon to get a certain return in these types of investments. You cannot do that. In Wall Street, you have no idea what the S&P 500 is going to do. Now you can look back on the history of it, and you can say, okay, since its inception, you know, it's got eight percent or whatever it might be, right? I don't know the answer to that, by the way, which is okay. But along the way, you've got this, okay, yeah. ups and downs, etc. With real estate investing, private lending, it's it's a contractually agreed upon return. It's easy to predict, and it and you're not going to have as many downs. Yes, a tenant will not pay every now and then. Yes, a loan will go sideways and you got to go through an eviction process and maybe get the property. That could be a blessing, actually, because now you have a property that you get to sell mm -hmm. and it goes back into your retirement account. But OK, I'm done with that soapbox. All right. So that's the checkbook IRA. The solo 401k, I already said it's primarily for the business owner and their spouse, hence the word solo. You actually can't have any W-2 employees working 500 or more hours per year outside of the business owner and their spouse. So that's who it's for. You can have 1099, independent contractors all day long, virtual assistants, all that is okay. Uh, so it does have that self-employment requirement attached to it. Here's how it works. You have a sponsor. Your business is the sponsor. This could be sole proprietor, corporation, LLC, partnership. Any type of business can sponsor a solo 401k. 
so what happens is once you have that, we, d we put together the plan, the plan sponsor, the business adopts the plan, the trust is created. Okay, so uh, with the IRA, there's an LLC. With the solo 401k, it is a trust. You are a trustee. Your wife, your spouse could be a, uh, a co-trustee and that's fine, but you're the trustee. That's what gives you the checkbook control. So we literally eliminate the custodian with the solo 401k instead of bypassing them. So mm -hmm. as the trustee, you get to open up accounts, you get to make investments, you have signing authority, uh, you can do anything that the account needs to be managed and all that. And so uh, you get to open accounts at a brokerage or uh, you know, sign on the dotted line on a purchase offer for a rental property. Um, you, know, you can go invest in the mortgage fund and you, you have that signing authority. And you can just go to your, your app on your phone for the bank account and wire the money in uh, to, for that investment. That's, that's, it's literally as simple as that. You can make an investment in as long as it takes you to write a check or do a wire transfer. Uh, and again, mm -hmm. just like the IRA, all the income, all the expenses, everything go into and out of that checking account, which is the home for the money. And it's important, by the way, I didn't say this, but it's important that these funds are kept separate from anything else because uh, you don't want to commingle. That can cause a lot of problems in the solo 401k, and it can cause even bigger problems in the IRA. It can actually cause the IRA to be uh, not qualified anymore, and that's a, that's a mess. So just keep everything separate, and you're fine. I'll talk more through what that looks like. But before I do, I want to talk about the contributions. Mm -hmm. So, and by the way, please, please ask questions. Uh, you could do it now or you could do it later. Uh, we may. Let's take, a, let's take a sec to answer a couple great ones that I think sure. have come in here, Brett. Um, yeah. We got one. What's the process for taking a loan from my solo 401k to invest um, a real estate investment? Love the question, thank you. Yes, the solo 401k does have the participant loan option. By the mm -hmm. way, not all solo 401ks this have this. Uh, I was consulted with a client today who was considering doing a solo 401k at Schwab. Now, if he did, he would only have access to what Schwab offers, which is stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, so he wouldn't have been able to do real estate. But anyway, that aside, mm -hmm they don't even offer the participant loan option. So he decided to go forward with us in establishing the solo 401k. So you can actually borrow up to $50,000 or 50% of the loan, of the, of the total plan balance, whichever is less, and you can use that for any purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's dawning on me, Tasso, as I'm answering this question, yeah. that you're asking about the loans to buy real estate, not the participant loan, <laughs> but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I'll answer both questions. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I'm gonna save the non-recourse loan question here for a little yeah. bit, but uh, that, that's how the participant loan option works. It's a five-year yeah, amortization so um, or 15 if you use it for a primary residence, uh, but a lot of people, not a lot of people come to us specifically for that, but it is an option with the 401k. Yeah, we got one more really good one that I think pertain kind of to the slides that were. Can employees invest their 401k if they have been working in the same company for 20 years, for over 20 years? Can the employee invest in the 401k if they've been working in the same company for over 20 years? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not 100% sure I understand the question, but I think I can answer it despite that. Uh, you can have a solo 401k, whether you have a W-2 job or not, it doesn't matter. Um, what happens is you actually cannot double dip on the employee contribution. So mm -hmm. let me continue my talk through this contribution slide and I'll answer the question along the way. Excellent. Um, yeah, so thank you for uh, whoever asked those questions, appreciate it. So first off, if you're over 50, you can contribute up to $76,500 per participant. So everything I'm talking about doubles if it's you and your spouse, <clears throat> you and your spouse participating mm -hmm. in the 401k. All right. If you're under 50, it's 69,000. Still a lot of money. It, it's two buckets. You're you're an employee and you're the employer. Okay. So as the employee you can contribute the elective deferral. Now, this is the same at a W-2 sponsored 401k plan. If I work at Walmart and I'm under 50, I can contribute up to $23,000 to that plan. It's the same with the solo 401k. If I'm over 50, it has a 7,500 catch up. 
So that employee contribution, also known as the elective deferral, goes up to $30,500. Again, W-2, solo 401k, it's all the same. What you can't do is you can't double dip on that one. So if I'm contributing, if I'm maxing that out at my W-2 job at Walmart and mm -hmm. I have a solo 401k, I can't also put in $30,500 or 23,000 if I'm under 50, okay? Now you can do both. If I'm doing 10,000 at the Walmart 401k, I can do another 13 or 20 at my solo 401k. That's one bucket, okay? Now the other bucket, you're probably wondering, how do I get from 30 or 23 to 76? Well, here's how. Uh, the solo 401k has what's called a profit sharing, also known as employer contribution, because again, you wear two hats. So the IRS says you can contribute as the employee and the employer. The employer contribution is a percentage of the profit of the company, or if you're incorporated like an S corp, it's a percentage of the payroll for the year. Okay, so simple math. If you pay yourself or the net profit is $100,000 for the year, you're gonna be able to contribute. Just let's take the W2 401k off the table for this. You're gonna be able to contribute 23,000 plus another 20% of the 100. So for a total of 43,000. Now you're still not to the max, right? So you can make more money and get to that max, but it's a percentage, 20% or 25% if you're running payroll of the payroll or the profit of the company plus the 23 or the 30 to get to the 69 or 76. I just said a lot of numbers. I hope that mm -hmm. makes sense. I'm happy to go through it again, but that's that's how those contributions work. And hopefully that answers the question from that person about the W-2 20 yeah, year four hundred one k. I think you covered a good a good amount there. Um, we'll we'll take a, a little bit time towards the end. We got a lot of questions rolling in um, to spend some time, Brett, and go, really go into these questions as well. Um, Perfect. We'll have all your questions answered at the end of the slide. Yeah, appreciate that, man. Uh, Proverbs twenty one twenty says the wise man saves for the future, but the foolish man spends whatever he gets. I can certainly attest to that over the course of my life. I've I've uh, fallen for a, a fair amount of shiny objects, as any real estate agent has. But uh, anyway, that's a whole nother story. All right, let me see if I can switch this up. Um, <laughs> There we go. All right. Let's talk further about the checkbook control. You have two types of retirement accounts, self-directed retirement accounts. You have a custodial account and you have a checkbook control account. We've talked a bit about the checkbook control account, but I want you to understand the difference. We don't offer full custodial accounts. We just don't do it. We feel like the checkbook control is, is, is easier and uh, just better all around. If you have a full custodial account, whether it's the 401k or the IRA, you have to go through the custodian for everything, all transactions. The custodian is on title and on purchase offers for everything for benefit of your retirement account, all right? So you're not, your, your retirement account's not even on title. Furthermore, there's extra fees. There's transaction fees along the way for each transaction. Some of them have, if their fee schedule allows for different options, they have like a flat annual fee. It's It's typically, not cheap to do is the un unlimited amount of transactions or you default to transaction fees. So if you own a rental property and you're doing multiple transactions a month for repairs or whatever, you're going to you're going to incur quite a bit of fees. And there's red tape involved because you have to request that the custodian executes a transaction or signs a purchase offer or whatever it is, right? That's involving uh, an investment. And so it's 24 hours, it's 48 hours. It, there's time involved. It just depends on the custodian and how fast they they act. Now, with checkbook control, I already mentioned, you can invest in as long as it takes you to write a check. Think about uh, going to an investment meeting. A lot of times somebody's pitching a deal, uh, maybe it's a wholesaler, and they have this deal and you've looked at it and the numbers make sense. That deal is not going to last because there's 50 people in the audience who are all looking at that same deal, especially if the numbers are good. If the numbers are good and you have a custodial 401k, you're not going to get it in time because you have to go through the custodian to execute that transaction. But if you have a checkbook for your solo 401k or your IRA right there on the spot, you can stroke a check, execute the agreement, 
and acquire that property for your 401k or IRA, again, right there on the spot. Uh, and so it just makes more sense to not have a custodial account. Uh, one more kind of horror story on this. Uh, we brought on a new client recently who has a self-directed IRA with one of our competitors. It's a full custodial IRA, like the one I'm saying uh, we don't do. And we established a checkbook IRA for them with us. And she is transferring um, two properties. One is free and clear. One has a loan, a non-recourse loan, which we're going to talk more about. In this non-recourse loan, on these documents, because it was a full custodial account, she actually has to go through the lender to retitle these properties to the new IRA, the checkbook IRA. And it's going to cost her like four grand in fees because now it's a full on refinance type situation. Whereas if she had checkbook control, all she would have had to do is do a quick claim deed and she wouldn't be having this problem. So there's a lot of reasons why you don't do a custodial account. Again, we bypass the custodian with the IRA using the LLC and we eliminate the custodian with the trust using the solo 401k. So that's checkbook control. Uh, let's talk more about leverage. Well, first off, you have to be, use a non-recourse loan. So if you buy a property, uh, it's gonna be 30 to 50% down. The property is the only security for the loan. That mean, That's what non-recourse means. By the way, Marshall Reddick offers these loans. So I definitely encourage you to check them out for this. Uh, you can do this in the IRA or the 401k. By the way, quick question to think about. When is the last time somebody offered to or was willing to uh, loan you money to buy more S&P 500? Just doesn't happen. But mm -hmm. you can leverage your money to buy, you know, to, to, to put 30% down, 40% down, 50, and, they'll, and, and double or more your of acquisition of real estate and get more appreciation, more rent, more cash flow, the whole shebang. Uh, and so it's just something to think about. Uh, the property needs to cash flow again because it's a non-recourse loan. The, it's, it, it, the property is the only security for the loan. So if, if the 401k or IRA defaults, which means basically you're defaulting, uh, they, they don't go after your credit. They don't go after you personally. It's just the property is the only thing they can take back. So because of that, you know, the interest rates are a little higher, but you got to and you got to have cash reserves if the numbers make sense it's a good deal to do the cash flow doesn't have to be excessive a few hundred bucks a month is enough usually for the lender to be okay with it um, you can visit our our website there and you can see a list of different non recourse lenders marshall reddick is on that list uh, definitely encourage you to talk to them about that uh, but that's how the non recourse loan works uh, one more note at the risk of going down a rabbit hole the IRA is going to have a UDFI tax for leveraged real estate where the solo 401k does not. Um, another reason why the solo 401k is superior, not only the higher contribution limits, but now you don't have, excuse me, you don't have the UDFI on leveraged real estate. So again, simple math, if 50% of the property is leveraged, has mortgage, then 50% of the income is going to trigger unrelated debt finance income, UDFI, which is going to trigger a tax called UBIT tax, unrelated business income tax, UBIT. That tax can scale up to 37%, but it doesn't get there until you get to about 12,000 of income and you get to depreciate and you get to write off expenses on that portion of the income before the tax is calculated. So it takes a lot to get up to 12,000 of income after all those deductions. That's only in the IRA. It doesn't mean it doesn't make sense to buy real estate in the IRA. I just want you to know that the IRA may have to file what's called a 990T tax return for this, uh, for this uh, UDFI, UBIT that is triggered. Again, the solo 401k is exempt from this, Talk to your CPA before you make a decision on this. All right. Oh, I lost it again. One second. There, there we go. go. All right. Disallowed investments, easy. No collectibles, no life insurance policies. On collectibles, think baseball cards, stamps, that sort of thing. Uh, the other piece to cover is um, disqualified parties. I'm going to try and go back one. There we go. Uh, so you, your spouse, 
your children, their spouses, your parents, and your grandparents, that lineal, the lineal descents are all disqualified parties, which mm. in a nutshell means you can't personally benefit from anything the, the retirement account owns or invests in. So you can't go stay at one of the rentals that it owns. Um, you can't manage it and get a fee for that. You can't do that. Uh, you could theoretically manage it, but we highly recommend you don't do that. Use Marshall Reddick to manage your property if it's in one of their markets mm -hmm. instead. That's going to be much cleaner for you. Even if, by the way, even if you do want to manage it, make sure you build into the pro forma a management fee because you may not want to manage it forever. In a year from now, if you say, I got to get a PM and mm -hmm. you didn't factor that in there, 10% probably is a good number to factor in up front. Depending uh, on the market, between seven to, to nine and a half, ten percent. Yes, depending on the market. There you go. Uh, and conservatively, do ten percent, right, for the pro forma. Because if you, mm -hmm. if you, all of a sudden need that property management company, and you didn't factor that in, you could end up negative every month if you didn't if you didn't factor that in upfront. Mm -hmm. Anyway, use Marshall Reddick from the get go if you're in one of their markets. But uh, you have to be really careful what kind of work. So the easy way to say it is you can do the white collar work but you can't do the blue collar work so i can hire the person that swings the hammer but i can't go swing the hammer myself none of these people that i mentioned can do that okay so that's how the disqualified parties work there's a lot more nuance to it depending on the situation but just know that it's best to invest third party and anybody who's going to work on the on the uh, on the investments like a property for example is just third party a brother sister aunt uncle that's okay but it's the son, the daughter, the parents, your spouse, grandparents, that that is not allowed, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. And then uh, getting to the end here, I just wanted to show a quick snapshot of all of the accounts we talked about, the self-directed IRA, the custodial IRA, which again, we don't do, the IRA LLC, also known as the checkbook IRA, we do, and then of course the solo 401k. So. I'm not going to go through e e any of the, uh, excuse me, I'm not going to go through all of these, but I am going to touch on a few, okay? Uh, first off, you already know that ours have checkbook control. The custodial accounts don't. The personal loan is only available in the 401k. UBIT on leveraged real estate only applies in the IRA. The max contribution, of course, is, is much higher in the solo 401k. And the Roth is something we need to talk more about. So the Roth is either uh, for the IRA, it's either a Roth self-directed IRA or it's a traditional. It's not one. You can have both or you can have one or the other. With the solo 401k, it actually has a Roth component built into it. So your contributions of up to 76500 per year can actually be Roth contributions. It is a taxable event, so make sure you check with your CPA. Or they can be traditional or a combination of both. Again, do I want to save on taxes today? and be taxed at distribution, traditional, pre-tax, or do I want to pay taxes on the seed and not pay taxes on the harvest? Obviously, you know which one is going to cost you more. Uh, it's just a matter of strategy right now, what benefits you right now uh, versus later. Um, so built-in Roth, super cool part of the 401k. And then, of course, the 401k has the self-employment requirement attached to it. Um, so that's a snapshot. We do have a free ebook you can grab from that URL right there. And then finally, if you do want to set up a consultation with me, happy to talk through your situation. Of course, we'll take some Q&A here. You can visit that URL on the bottom there. And uh, that right, wraps wow. up my time. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, just every time I, I, um, I hear you talk, I learn two or three new things every single time. Um, as advisors here at Marshall Reddick, we want to create an investment strategy that is tailored to your best interest and to your needs. So a lot of the times investing out of your 401k or IRA is the best possible play. And with relationships like the ones we have, you know, with Brett here, we're really able to team up. And if this were an option that you are interested in exploring or navigating, we hop on a call and just ultimately guide you through the process. There, there are options out there a little bit unique from uh, you know the regular investment strategy and this is one of them and I think it's it's a excellent option for someone who who qualifies you know so thank you so much Brett uh, before I kind of close this out here I we got 
we got kind of bombarded with questions at the end, so we're going to answer a couple. Um, one being, can you use self-directed IRA to purchase raw land? Yes. It's going to be hard to get a loan on it because, again, it has to be non-recourse, and there's usually uh, land is risky because there's no improvement on it, and there's generally no income on it, so the non-recourse loan typically won't work. But, yeah, you can. Again, okay. only uh, life insurance and collectibles are are not allowed. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, what are some unique or lesser known real estate investment opportunities that can be explored using a 401k or IRA? I like that one. Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I would say, uh, I don't know if it's lesser known, but PMLs are great private money loans. Uh, we have a client in uh, Colorado who actually his sponsoring business of his 401k is his hard money lending business. But so so he knows the business. He's going to do the same thing in his solo 401k. He originates these notes. They're six month terms for fix and flippers. He gets two points up front and 14 percent on the back end uh, as a balloon in six months. And so he's going to rinse and repeat that over and over again. So I, I don't know if it's lesser known, but it's it's certainly a powerful way to invest your money for sure. Now, that, there's obviously a little more hands-on involved in that. He's creating these notes. He's doing all this work. Uh, a lot of our clients like the more passive way of doing it, like investing at Marshall Reddick's mortgage fund is an example, which is also private lending. It's just a lot more passive for you. Yeah. So we got a little bit of a longer one here. Just to be clear, if buying real estate through a Roth, solo 401k, all maintenance um, and repairs have to be made from the Roth solo 401k, um, can't mingle funds by paying repairs with non-qual money, correct? Correct. Okay, so we, we went through that as well. Okay, excellent questions. Um, what happens if my real estate investment within my solo 401k doesn't perform as expected? How can I safeguard or minimize losses? Uh, I mean, you could sell the, you could sell it. That's one way. Uh, obviously, if there's a, if there's no mortgage on it, it should be, it should be cash flowing, you know. Yeah, but uh, if, if for some reason it's, it's a dog and it's in a bad area or whatever, I mean, you just part ways with it. But I would suggest you do your due diligence before you do that. And going through a company like Marshall Reddick to buy these properties is going to be a lot safer than you doing it out on your own. And so I would, I would lean on. Uh, people like them. And that's where I was going to step in as well. That's why it's super important to schedule a, a consultation with an advisor so we can run through those pro formas to, you know, go over property trends and look into markets that are specific with your investment strategies um, and dive into the exact figures on what those properties will generate over a 10, 15, 20 year course. Um, what we're looking at rent wise um, and ultimately come up with a final decision and pull trigger. We represent, you know, from the beginning and on the brokerage side and move you over to the management side where we manage the property to the most professional extent. So, I mean, wow, right? We just, we had a lot of great information here. Thank you so much for logging on. Sure. Um, again, if there are any questions that anyone would like more in-depth conversation on, we can always schedule a complimentary consultation and go into details. Um, Brett is also available and we are happy to hop on a three-way call as well. Okay, we got a couple more questions here and then we'll close out the event this evening. Good info. Someone here is very interesting and new to me. So we're getting some uh, positive feedback on all this information. Does vacant land investment have to be collateralized with a deed of trust or would an unrecorded loan contract suffice? Did you get that, Brett? I did. Uh, I guess I don't fully know what an unrecorded loan contract is. Um, like a private loan? Yeah. So if you did like a, first off, let me back up a little bit. The, the, the non-recourse loan is a requirement no matter what type of lending it is. Uh, you can 
So I'm assuming the answer to your question is yes, as long as it's non-recourse, it doesn't matter. You can do a subject to purchase where you know you just take over the loan payments of the existing mortgage and title changes to your 401k or IRA. That's fine too. Uh, I know it, it's technically not non-recourse, but you're also not going through the refi process, but sub two works. Um, and first off, it's because the previous borrower is still on the mortgage. You're just taking over payments. You can do seller carry back financing. That's fine. You can do land trusts, you know, whatever. As long, again, as long as it's non-recourse, it's fine. Okay, excellent. Um, one more here. How do I protect my real estate investments inside my 401k from potential legal liabilities? Uh, I love that question. That comes up all the time. So you have a few options. First off, just like owning real estate outside of your 401k or IRA, especially if you have a mortgage, you're going to be required to. But even if you don't, you should have hazard insurance. You should also have the right kind of hazard insurance and the right amount of hazard insurance. You should also have an umbrella policy. You can get a million dollar, two million dollar umbrella policy for, you know, four, four to eight hundred dollars a year or something like that. It's not expensive. That's generally sufficient to protect you. Now, if you're talking to an asset protection attorney and they're saying, oh, you need a separate LLC for everything. Okay, maybe. But think about it like this. The the retirement account has its own EIN number. It's it's a separate entity from you. Hold on a second. It's a separate entity from you. So your personal situation, your finances, your personal, your house that you live in, everything is already separate. They can't, they can't go after you. That whatever mm -hmm. is uh, at risk is what's in the 401k. So if you own one rental property in the 401k, there's no reason to create another LLC because it's already protected in the 401k. Mm -hmm. If you own a bunch, maybe you could do a few LLCs. I don't know. I, I can count on one hand how many people, our clients, create a separate LLC, special purpose LLC, by the way. This is not your run-of-the-mill like holding company LLC. It has to be set up properly. Um, and so it's not you know, 50 bucks on legal zoom you have to you have to have someone like us do it uh anyway i digress on that um if you have uh if you're doing like private money lending or even syndication deals where you're a, a limited partner you know there's no risk anyway so you don't need you don't need this limited liability protection in there it's really only the rental properties and hopefully i address that but happy to answer more on that uh, we have one more come in. Do you have resources to begin the LLC process? Uh, we do it. So That's yes, awesome. <laughs> yeah. If That's you want to, awesome. if you want to set up the checkbook IRA, which which includes the LLC, then uh, we should jump on a call. No problem. Yeah, amazing. Great information here. We love hopping on with our preferred vendors to give information on um, different strategies on how to get into some investment property. Um, again, a recording of this presentation will be sent to everyone's email 24 hours um, after we're done here. Uh, we thank you again so much for logging on and um, look forward to having you on the next webinar. All right, everyone. Brett, thank you so much. Thank everyone, you. Have a great evening. Thanks, everybody. Take care.